when did abortion become a Supreme Court issue for the first time? Well, um, the, the issue really came to the court first in, in Roe versus Wade and in the companion case Doe versus Bolton in 1973. Yet, we feel called, as women, to stand in opposition to the shrill, radical women's organizations set to destroy Judge Alito, John Roberts, and frankly, any other Bush nominee. To them, I say, proceed with your sit tired, silly, and if you, antics. And if you must, go ahead. But no, you don't represent the, Amer the majority of American women. Uh, there is a fundamental right, uh, which it found in the Liberty Clause, uh, or the Liberty Provision of the Due Process Clause of the Constitution, which was uh, the same provision relied on in, in Eisenstadt. A fundamental right of? A fundamental right of reproductive choice, uh, including the right uh, to have an abortion. Court said was, in the first trimester, the first 12 weeks or so, generally abortion is safer than childbirth, and so we're going to let the women make the choice. When we start to see the procedures be more risky, second trimester and on, we're going to allow the states to legislate something in the interest of maternal health. Second interest that the court recognized was an interest in fetal life. And the court said, once the fetus becomes viable, able to live uh, independent of the mother, um, around 24 weeks, third trimester, then the states have an interest in protecting fetal life and then they can regulate in that last part of the pregnancy uh, and even ban the abortion procedure all the way through. However, the mother's health has to be paramount. So abortion, even in third trimester under Roe, could not be banned if it was needed to protect the woman's health or her life. So we have a fundamental right. We have countervailing state interests. My name is C.A. and I'm in the 12th grade. And when it comes to abortions, I'm pro-life about it because uh, I feel killing an innocent child is wrong. And if it, it was your choice to, uh, you know, do what you did, now you touch it whenever you got to take the responsibility of taking care of a child, not just killing something, you know, innocent. How would you feel if that was if you were inside? You know? uh, if a, a single mother with four kids already goes out on a one night stand has sex with someone, gets pregnant, she probably can't afford to, to raise that baby and it won't have a good life. Um, so I think in that situation, she should, be, she should be able to have an abortion. But if you've got a really rich family that's got like four kids and they can afford to raise that baby and have a good life for that child, then what's the harm in it? You know, it's not going to mess up their lives. Religion doesn't really affect my decision on abortion because I'm not really a religious person. I mean, I've gone to church and I go to church occasionally, but like, don't go that often. And you know, if someone wants to have an abortion and they can afford the child and support it and have it make it have a good life, there's no reason for them to kill it off. I mean, they got themselves into that situation and they should get themselves out of it. But if someone's just going out and you know, having sexual intercourse and conceiving children when they're not supposed to, like teenagers and stuff, then yeah, they should definitely have an abortion. Like people who are pro-life, they think every life is precious. I mean, 
if you ask them about the death penalty and see if they agree with that, and if they do, that's a precious life. That's still someone's life that someone else has taken into their hands. I'm Megan Doris and I am pro-life. I'm pro-life because I believe that every life has a chance and that the Bible says we should kill babies or murder and abortion is murder. I think that if God intended for them to have this baby, they should have this baby. I'm Devin Snagrath and I'm pro-choice. I believe a woman should have the right to do whatever she wants with her body. Men tend to leave a woman, if she, especially a teenager or younger, if she gets pregnant, they will just leave. They don't have to take care of the child, and I don't think that's right. Also, if the baby is going to be mentally retarded, I don't think it's right to force a parent to have to deal with that. It, it's safer to make it legal than to have it illegal when people then are desperate and using dangerous methods to end them on a pregnancy. My name is Lestar Taylor. Uh, I'm 15 years old. I'm a sophomore at Huntington High School, and I'm straight. Um, I think abortion, I'm totally against that. You know, if you have a life inside your stomach and everything, and for you to go and kill it, what if your parents had did that to you? You know what I'm saying? It's just ridiculous. I mean, yeah, we have bad times and everything like that in our lives, but think about the good times. And if we weren't here, to actually go through them good times, where the hell would we be, you know, if our parents just put something up them and, you know, we was just out there just like that. It's crazy and it's sickening. It's like thousands of babies are dying every year, every month from abortions. You shouldn't even be involved in sexual activities to get yourself pregnant in the first place if you think you're going to have an abortion or something.